Hello, good evening, good morning. Welcome to Drag Nights. I'm Fernando. I'm Tim. And we have our two lovely guests joining us today. The lovely, the beautiful Novella. <laughs> and the old bitch. I know. Who's very <laughs> all woman herself, Demonica. Thunderous applause. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. So May was a pretty huge fucking month in general in terms of drag. We all went to DragCon, me and Novella and Alaro, who is upstairs right now. We're shooting at the parish, by the way. Oh, this isn't... Oh, yeah. Bitch, you couldn't <laughs> tell? Do you not see the brick wall that we normally have in our studio? We got a bigger budget this time. <laughs> Coming home from DragCon, we had two shows back to back. We had Miss Sigourney Beaver presented by Demonica DeVille. And we also had Malaysia Baby Doll Fox from season 15 of Drag Race. We also saw her at DragCon and we saw Sigourney at DragCon. So this is going to be a jam packed episode. Just everything DragCon and everything Moonlight Madness with Demonica DeVille. So welcome. Well, I didn't get to go to DragCon, but I took them to the airport and I got this shirt. And I got a lovely little toy. Come on, reach for the stars, girl. <laughs> the official shade button of RuPaul's Drag Race. Available. No, we're not pl- We're not plugging that. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not plugging shit tonight. Unless, no, no, unless, they're, they're, not unless they're giving us money. Kind of. I got my DragCon t-shirt. Yes, yes. Where did you get that again? DragCon from yeah. the... DragCon LA. Exactly. So, girls, how are y'all doing tonight? Tonight is awesome. Tonight is a nice chill night, but we're still having fun. We're all together. This place is amazing. I don't know if you've if you've not been here, you definitely need to come out when there's a show. I'm doing great. <laughs> if y'all aren't familiar with what DragCon is, there's, I believe, three of them every year. There's usually one in LA, in New York, and in the UK, typically in the spring, the summer, and in the fall. So... Wherever you're watching this, if there's one happening near you or in your country, go to it. It's a great time. It's fun. Get to meet all the entertainers from the all the international versions of the show and abroad, just like different drag queens who aren't on the show as well. Um, we saw Sigourney Beaver at DragCon, and it's funny because I saw her. I did her meet and greet, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to see you on Wednesday. She's like, bitch, you're from San Antonio? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing the show with um, that you're going to be in. I'm actually photographing your meet and greet. So with that being said, um, Sigourney Beaver, I believe, is your fourth show overall with Moonlight Madness. Is it four already? I think because uh, you started in February, no? Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I guess fourth, fourth one, going going strong so far, building an audience, you know, building a crowd, building um, a vibe, building a show. So yeah, y'all definitely come out and see it. So the Sigourney Beaver show itself was just. It was different from the previous three shows because normally we have it where the Sunday night show is and that's where you have your show as well every third Wednesday of the month. Come check it out. Yeah, it's usually in the video bar. Moonlight Madness. But for the bigger show, they wanted it uh, downstairs and I wanted to have tables and have more of production value. I want a little stage, little sets, um, you know, a lighting design, some kind of, you know, mood. Um, Just to give people more of an experience, something more immersive. Um, That's the, the theater kid in me, so... Yeah, I wanted to bring that to the, to the city and bring Sigourney, and everyone had a good time. It was a good show. It was a, it was a success in my eyes. I didn't lose any money, so that's good. <laughs> it was great. I mean, we were there. We we had a blast, and she's 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 the same way on screen and off screen. Like, she's a freaking sweetheart. Yeah, no, like. she's super sweet. I spent time with her, of course, picking her from the airport and all that. We were talking, and then the day I uh, took her to the airport, went to like, the fabric store, and we were like, talking and stuff like that. So she was cool. She was, she, was, she was real mellow, chill. I liked her personality. She was definitely how she was on the show, and... It was refreshing, you know, because a lot of queens sometimes put an act on or, you know, a, a facade because um, they think people are going to want that on, on TV. But just be yourself. And she said that, too. I told her I was going to audition for next season. And she's like, just be yourself. That's all it takes. Just be yourself. They can see right through you if you're not. So and that was good advice. So with that being said, we're going to jump into our first performer of the night. We have Who? our very own. <laughs> she's sitting right next to you, bitch. Casper? <laughs> <laughs> Here is the very lovely Demonica Deville. Enjoy.
again, that was Demonica DeVille, everyone. If y'all enjoyed her performance, her tipping information is inside her performance video, so please send her a dollar so that way she can do more shows. And, because why not? The bitch is hot and she performs and puts on a good show. Aside from those tips, I understand that you accept other tips, other transactions. Is that true? <laughs> Ma, just the tip, though. Just the tip. <laughs> I'm a married woman. What about a fist? Um, as long as it's doubled and <laughs> it's uh, in a punching motion, uh, use um, J Lube instead of Crisco. It's <laughs> friction. But you see, the thing is, I'm when serious. you're done with the Crisco, you can use it for baking afterwards. Bitch, she ain't gonna bake. <laughs> she gonna, she gonna get baked. <laughs> she gonna get some fried chicken. Yeah, I'll get baked. <laughs> sure. I don't cook with Crisco, especially if it's been in my asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but it comes out already warm, and then you just put it in the pan. It's gonna warm up in Shut ten up. minutes. <laughs> Question. <laughs> so I understand you were well. You were with us all throughout DragCon and all throughout the the shows as well. When we came back, how did you like Sigourney? Oh, Sigourney was so sweet, so sweet. The pictures were amazing. She, I actually met her at DragCon too, and I got to talk to her and say, you know, I'm going to see you on um, whatever day it was, and um, on Wednesday. And she's like, oh my god, you know. And she took telling me about her travel plans. So I was so excited to see her there. I was so excited to see her at your show, and your show was amazing. Number one, the layout was so cool um it felt like we were transported to another area oh i love that that was so that was was what i wanted yes and so you know if you guys didn't go you know the and and you saw on the video you you got to see the layout and everything it was just so awesome i I enjoyed it so much thank you thank you so much i appreciate that because it's a lot of work to put on a show um it's all fun and dandy to come see the show but uh the logistics of putting on together, scheduling, like doing rehearsals, doing little group numbers, that rehearsal, um, just getting with the bottom, organizing with them, um, the girls, working with like managers, like, you know, bring girls in. It's a, it's a lot of work that goes into a show. Um, but it's also very rewarding when you have a show and it's successful and people have a good time and people enjoy it and it uh, makes an impression on them. So I appreciate when I hear stuff like that because then it makes it all worth it, you know, and that's, you know, that means the world to me. I'm a, I feel like I'm a showman at heart. Like I have to put on shows. I have to entertain people, whether it's myself or other people on stage, like, you know, bringing like a show to people that they, they see and they enjoy just giving people just something they've never seen before. Um, is a, is a really big, uh, just personal, like passion of mine. So I'm glad that uh, that comes through in my shows because all the effort and the work and um, just little small details that go into the show, you know. Um, yeah, so thank you. I appreciate the novella. And I appreciate the support from everybody. It's like, I need support. Like, that's what I need at this 100%. point. Like, I'm trying to build something. I'm trying to, you know, um, create a crowd. So I just need more support. So please come out. Um, every third Sunday. Yeah, I'm every third Sunday. Every third Wednesday. Sorry, shit. Every third Wednesday, yes. Every third Wednesday at the Bonham Exchange um, at 11 o'clock. So with that being said, we have our second performer of the night. She comes all the way from the Boulay Brothers Dragula Season 4. Four, top four at that. We saw her at Dracon. Here is Sigourney Beaver. Enjoy.
that was Sigourney Beaver, everyone. If you liked her, we actually had her tipping information. So tip her if you liked her. You guys can catch her in Chicago if you're in the Chicago area. I know she's a hometown girl there. So Demonica, Sigourney Beaver's show was one of your biggest shows yet. What do you have planned next, if anything? Um, well, I can't give away too much, but I am definitely um, talking to a couple more Dragula girls coming down in the fall. Um, hopefully I can work out with some of their schedules and my schedule at the same time and uh, get some more Dragula girls down here, have like bigger shows. Um, Again, just to kind of cultivate that audience and build something, you know, new for San Antonio, more of an alternative drag scene and stuff like that. So yes. it's important to have the alternative um, aspect because I think it is we, too. it is underground and it is, you know, sometimes it is um, not mainstream, mm-hmm. but you have so much fun. You have so much fun and you feel so connected. If you don't feel comfortable at, a regular drag show, an alternative drag show is definitely for you. And Novella, I'm glad you brought that up. So for some of our viewers, how would you describe your drag aesthetic, for example? So I I actually am not a drag performer. I've done a couple of shows and I actually did them with an alternative um, drag group. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, what I did. Heard. I know, it was a long time ago. <laughs> but um, I am a drag enthusiast. I go to drag in every every time I go out. I go to drag. I go in drag, and I'm very supportive. And and I in fact I don't even wear wigs anymore. I just started growing out my hair. I started doing my own thing. And yeah, this is all natural. (laughs) You should see down there. But um, don't want to. (laughs) (laughs) But I, you know, the the alternative drag, and also, I mean, sometimes when when you go to some of the mainstream drag it's not as accepted and so when you go to alternative drag the alternative drags they don't care they they accept you how you are and so you know (laughs) exactly i saw balls at one of your shows were they mine just kidding (laughs) (laughs) my balls don't fall out my show you should have seen you should have seen the photo shoot people (laughs) um yeah no but it's just it's it's nice because i grew up seeing drag in san antonio and san antonio is very pageant very very pageant and i get it i love it you know it's you know that's a certain type of drag but there's so many other kinds of drag i think i think can be expressed and showed and acknowledged Absolutely. and validated just as much as a pageant queen you know like um nothing against pageant queens like you know they're beautiful they they, they do their thing they're very disciplined they have you know their certain look their they're, little they're poofs amazing. their makeup they're yeah amazing. they're very talented artists as well but there's you know there's more than one picasso there's more than one type, type of artist you know in the, in, in the drag world and and i think what people don't understand is drag is not just female impersonation no 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 drag has evolved into so much more but you never get to see that because all most people care about is female impersonation mm-hmm. and that's what it started off as i mean drag mm-hmm. you know the word is you know dressing up as a girl and like shakespearean times because women weren't allowed to be on the stage is where it kind of originated from but yeah i mean you could dress up in costume and be a boy or girl an alien a, a beast of some sort you know like it's all drag and it's just it's self it's all self-expression how you feel um inside you just kind of bring it in the outside you're kind of like flipping yourself inside out this is gonna bring us to our next segment so i have a question what's your favorite pokemon and why we're gonna ask each of us these so pokemon? yes you, pokemon um i don't know <laughs> fucking charmander is like the only one i know his name it's a little like dragon right yeah but why charmander because it's the only one i fucking know his name that's why <laughs> what are the, the other names oh squirtle <laughs> squirtle's cute too because he's squirt <laughs> oh definitely gengar Gengar is my. What the fuck man. is a Gengar? He's a little ghost. Okay, that'll be cute. And he ev- he's the final evolution. He's super powerful. He has Shadow Ball. And Shadow Balls? Yes. Shadow, shadow balls. balls. And I mean, I love his grin. You know, I love a Cheshire grin. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of my favorites. Okay, yeah. You girl? Oh, Oshawott. Oshawa, yeah, it's, it's an Oshawa. Oshawa, it's one of the newest ones, but he has a cute little attitude. He's you see, adorable. I stop at Johto. You stop the hell up. <laughs> He's an adorable, little, playful, kind of mm, prissy Pokemon. Like me. You know, I would say Starry, but I'm going to go ahead and say that my champ is my favorite one because you still he's say daddy. You that shit out. <laughs> I will. I said I would say Staryu, but I'm going to go with my champ because 
Number one, he's made of rock and, well, you know, you could see him. I'm not trying to indulge as Pokemon um, fetish, but <laughs> how many Pokemon are there? Like, so like thousands, hundreds? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's like 900 or so, it's almost a thousand, I think, at this point. But I stop at Johto. I stop at like. It's about the same as Drag Queens. Okay, we don't know how many. Reaver, Reaver, we don't know how many have been released, but they're out there. Of Drag Race, we how many fucking Pokemon. How many times we? we how many times we evolve? <laughs> Well, I have blue. I'm wearing my blue hydrangea shirt that I got at Dracon, and clearly, I they wouldn't even be on the shirt if these weren't any of her favorite Pokemon. So, these are some of hers. I don't even know who half of them are. I know there's, I know there's Mew, there's Squirtle, and then there's Iceon, and I don't know who the fuck this bitch up here is. Atreon, I guess. It's a bird. Did you mention Mew? I did say Mew, definitely. And while we were at Dracon, I actually had the opportunity on day two to ask a lot of the queens who their favorite Pokemons were. So here are the, some of the girls' favorite Pokemons. I want to know what your favorite Pokemon is and why. Um, my favorite Pokemon would probably be Umbreon because he's black. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite Pokemon is Psyduck because when Psyduck has, it, has enough, it goes out. Yeah. Oh my god, I don't know Pokemon, I'm sorry. <laughs> My game. favorite Pokemon is a Venusaur. Yeah, that one is my Venusaur. Look at oh, me. That's I love it. plants, baby, if you know what I mean. Girl. That's my favorite, too. <laughs> so my favorite Pokemon is Vap Vaporeon. I can't even say the name. But I only like them because of how fierce they are and uh, how cute and like. So, and I actually have a Funko Pop of them for my friend Ian. And, uh, and I like just love. I don't even know their powers. I know nothing about it. I just love the visuals. They're water and they squirt water. That's okay, about it. I like a squirt. <laughs> okay. okay. Pikachu. Because um, I'm electric. There we go. I'll take that. I'll take that. Okay, so Jigglypuff. Why Jigglypuff? Because Jigglypuff is the one that can change into anything, isn't it? No, that's um, that's Ditto. Yeah, no, Jigglypuff is like hell is that. No, Jigglypuff is because I'm like inflatable like Jigglypuff. But also Ditto because I am effervescent and transformative and can do anything as featured on Down Under Season 2. Yes. Okay, Six and mil. mine's still Squirtle. And you know why? Because I squirt. <laughs> I love it, It's got to be Sylveon because of the trans representation. Everyone's thinking Eevee like evolution. Yeah, you are wearing it sort of a talisman of drag queens. That really is. My favorite Pokemon is all the evolution of Eevee. And my most favorite evolution of Eevee is Sylveon, so. Girl, mine ah! is Espeon. Yes, and of course Glishon, like the blue one. Yes. And the fairy one, so. All of them. Ah! I choose you. Um, My favorite Pokemon, I don't know the name of it. What, is it Mothra? Uh, she's like really tall and skinny and she's got like Moth antenna. I know which one you're talking about. I forgot her name. I haven't kept up with like the newer generation. Bitch. Right, so I've never sure. watched, I've never watched Pokemon or played it, but when I was a kid, my sister collected the cards. It was this really cool thing. It was like nude with little ears and it looked like an alien with a long, really long tail. Mew? Yes. Because I like Mew Mew, the fashion design. So let's go with Mew. I hear Mew Mew and I think like Tokyo Mew Mew. Like yes. Mew. It's that one. It's that oh old baby God, pink. I can't find a picture of her. It's not that one. It's not Frosmoth. There's like another bitch. Guys, you'll know who I'm talking about. She's it's, like, um, it's Pikachu. Oh God. <laughs> she's really tall and skinny and she's a model and she's got moth antenna and that's fucking me, bitch. I mean, if you know bitch. who it is, leave it in the comments below. Yeah. yeah. Articuno, because she's cold hearted and sickening, bitch. Um, I'd have to say mine is Mewtwo because we love a weird art alien, but like, there you and Machamp can fucking he can take a bitch. Oh, Machamp. Well, you know, I really enjoyed Donna Summers doing the Pokemon song. Remember that? Back in the early 2000s, Donna Summers released that Pokemon song. And would it be Pikachu? Would it be? Well, I don't know. That's <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Thank you. So that was some of their favorite Pokemon, y'all. Also at Dracon, you just saw her in the video. We have a performance from Irene Dubois. So here is Irene Dubois. Ooh. It's Irene Dubois.
So my head back, feel the tears fall
And that was Irene Dubois, everyone. If y'all enjoyed her performance, go ahead and follow her on social media and just see her if you're in Seattle. She's a Seattle girl, so check her out. So at DryCon, Novella, you took your own solo flight by yourself. I did. No company. Like these two shits that left me here. (laughs) But any new experiences while you were down there? Any new men, positions, food? Well... (laughs) I didn't join the Mile High Club because I like to sleep when I'm on a plane. Yeah, did I? No, no, no. I, I, I did take my own flight just because um, I, I'm i very... It's a private jet. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I'm very unorganized when I'm traveling. And so I like, you know, just to kind of have my own little thing. But um, once I got there, I made sure... I, I was the one who wanted to have, like, organization. <laughs> And I wanted to make sure that we got to places in a in a particular time and stuff. So I, I'm very like anal about that when it comes to travel. Yeah, but you that's, did anal that's while you were anal, there, right? That's the anal part that I like. But um, no, LA was awesome. It was. It was. I actually, um, my family lived in LA many, many, many years ago. I left when I was six years old, so I don't even remember it. Um, but um, it was just nice to see something different and it was so busy and it was like just bustling and the airport's going through a lot of renovations so oh, well, what about the experiences you got that while you were there can you share a little bit more on this? oh yeah definitely i mean um <laughs> so we stayed in a reasonably priced hotel which actually was the room was great the room was nice and big it accommodated all of us it was not in the best part of town, which we found. Um, it was quite interesting to be in this part of town, which probably would have been akin to maybe the east side of San Antonio. Ooh, <laughs> the drugs more expensive, I guess, is what um, our viewers wanted. <laughs> the drugs, the drugs were reasonably priced. They probably weren't the best quality. Um, the men were probably not the best quality, <laughs> but reasonably <laughs> priced as well. <laughs> The rats, though, the rats were the cheapest I've ever seen. (laughs) I did a free meet and greet with Ratatouille. He was right outside of our hotel, so that was fun. He was just there, and I was like, yay. The weird thing is that there wasn't a lot of drag people that were at our hotel, but most of the time we weren't even at the hotel. We were at DragCon. And, I mean, literally it was just to sleep, and, and then we headed over to... And then we um, did a couple of um, nightclubs, which was so much fun. We The nightclub was a lot of fun. And we saw a lot of the queens out and about during the nightclub. Yeah. And that's where I had my anal experiences. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, the precinct in downtown LA is, it was something. If y'all haven't, seen, haven't been there, it's, it's wild. It, it gets crazy, but... We saw a lot of the girls from Drag Race, from all the international versions as well, like, there. One of the things about DragCon is you really have to have, like, organization to make sure you get to the lines. Because some of the lines are super long. Um, You know, Bianca Del Rio's was really long. Alaska's was really long. Um, it's like a theme park. Did they have a flash pass? Literally, literally. And we did. we had a fl- we had like uh we had a <laughs> version of a flash pass. We had the VIP, but it kind of didn't make sense though because some of the lines, it was, you know, they had like the little like thingamajiggy with like the barricades or whatever that you zigzag through and then you get to the front you get the merch and you take the photo, and they had a separate straight line to where you get to the merch booth. You buy your merchandise, and then they would go, okay, one flash pass, one regular, one flash pass, one regular. You keep regular. saying flash pass, and I'm it thinking flesh. <laughs> flesh pack? Yeah. yeah. You have to buy a flashlight before you get there. You buy one of Heidi's flesh packs. Willem had one. Heidi has one, too, of her mouth, of her uh-huh. cat. <laughs> and, you know, you did, you did mention that a lot of the international queens were there, and there were. There were a ton of them. That's, That's cool. mainly what I focused on. You know, I want I wanted to Chaney. see Bag of Cheeps. Uh, I saw Lawrence Cheney because I missed her when she was here um, for for Ray Lopez. So I saw uh, Lawrence Cheney, Blue Hydrangea, who I really was so excited to meet. Uh, um, Maxi Shields from Australia, Dang. Bag of Chips. I saw um, Cheryl Hole. 
Uh, Veronica Green. Veronica Green was my ultimate favorite. Really? Because wow. literally, I, I was I was kind of pissed because I it took so long. But then when I got there, I spent 45 minutes with her. Oh, shit. I mean, literally, I was in there and I was just like, oh, my God, I think I spent so much time with you. But her and I had like a long conversation. That's cool. And I mean, to have a I long conversation with, with like do that, that. Yeah. I mean, she literally had like a little tea set and you had you took pictures. Mm -hmm. You bought her merch. And then she just sat and talked to you for, cool. for like 20 to 30 minutes. I think it's nice when they do that, you know? Like, Yeah, you really get to meet yeah. them and you really get to Make connect with them. Friends. And so I think that was one of the thing, cool things about it. I did that with uh, Rita Baga from Canada. Okay. Her and I sat and talked for a long time. I was trying to speak French. Well, that didn't work so well. <laughs> Speaking of Rita Baga, I got her to say hi to you so if you could look over here. Bonjour, hi, this is Rita Baga, and I have a little message for Fernando. Bonjour! Aww. That's all you got? That's she it? said hi, bitch. Just one? Just one. Okay, so I get a button, I get a shirt, and I get one hi. Yay! And the whoopee cushion. And the whoopee cushion. Okay, I okay, guess so I'm good. And the shade button. Yeah, the button, I said the button. Oh, I, <laughs> I want to show my Isis Couture fan. She was amazing. I do. I actually caught. You got more merch. Uh, some a, a couple of things in merch. See, I took my my high heel Ooh. bag, and I got. I Drag did. Call. I did want to see. I I ended up seeing um, pan, um, Pangina again, so I got her T-shirt. She didn't have any merch when she was here, so. Um, Cheddar Gorgeous, I mentioned. Cheddar I was. Love Cheddar. Oh my god, Cheddar was so awesome. And so I got her t-shirt. Oh, you know so what I forgot nice. to bring? I forgot to bring my Jimbo jacket. I bought Jimbo's jacket, which was a little expensive, but still. I love Jimbo. You and Alvaro got some pretty fucking expensive jackets over I there. I think she's going to win. <laughs> and then stars. Um, this is the DragCon um, pass. Wow, this is cute. And then we got oh, to go to... After Hours. We Yay. got to go to two After Hours. We did the season 15. And then That's we also cool. did uh, Bianca Del Rio. Right. And you mentioned you met Pangina. We met Pangina a few times. Did you go to her show here when she came for Ray Lopez? I went to her show um, here. And um, I also met her at DragCon. At DragCon, I actually asked her about her show, um, Tongue Tied. And we started talking about the different restaurants because we, my niece and I had already planned to go to one of the restaurants. So we wanted to get her take on the restaurants. She told us which one to go to and we actually got to go. We did. And I got the drunken noodles. They were pretty spicy. You got the papaya salad on a scale of one to 10. How spicy was it? Um, it was about a seven on spiciness. I asked for like a medium, but it was still pretty spicy. Keep in mind that like, although we're Latinos and Latinas and all that good shit, our spicy is nothing compared to like Thailand spicy. spicy. <laughs> we also went to the Universal Studios. Um, we went to visit the new Super Mario World. So Did you ride him fun. nice and hard? Oh wait. Oh, we rode Koopa. King Koopa. Did you jump on his mushrooms. We rode King Koopa. Mm. You actually feel like you're in like the actual like Super That's Mario cool. movie. It was so cute. Did y'all do any like, drugs? No, just the shrooms. Oh, yeah, I bet it's great to shroom at Mario World. I had a great fucking time on shrooms there. But get this, the world was cute. The ride wasn't. The ride wasn't bad. Just if I were to go again, it wouldn't be like the first stop I go to. You was know what I'm saying? Ride? There was only one ride. There was games for people to play. Okay. So you course, could play like, games. The set yeah, and then and then the world itself. Okay. So but the ride itself was like a interactive game. Okay. So you got there and you actually played and you had points and okay. stuff like that. Oh cute. Like you're in like actual like yes. Mario Brothers game. Yes. Shut up. That's cool. And you got no, you're actually in the Mario Kart world. Okay. Is what it is. Even better. Yeah. What are you talking about? That's cool. <laughs> it was it was really cool. I wanna go. But it was <laughs> very short. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Hallucinogenics oh, and house. driving. Okay. <laughs> we didn't have a. We actually didn't have that for that. I love it. Took fast so fast. long to get on. Everything else we had a, a, a fast pass <laughs> for. So we're nearing the end of our episode. We, before we sign off for the night, we're gonna leave you with one more performance. She was also on season 15 of Drag Race. Here is the very lovely Amethyst. Enjoy.
time they turn the lights down Just wanna go that extra mile for you Your public display of affection Feels like no one else in the room with you We can't get down like there's no one around We keep on rocking, we keep on rocking Cameras are flashing away Turn all you straight bitches gay So sell the bitches up like Sabina Get the court, set a bitch up like Serena Kat Von D, give that bitch a vaccine I'm a mean girl, George Regina Yeah, these girls real shady, slim I'm coming to invade ya, Zim Slam dunk when I touch the rim Sit back and watch a queen win Hit the floor, now my fist is getting more Getting more, drowning in Dior Bitch, I'm so major, so hardcore Feeling like a whore, sitting on the floor And that was Amethyst from season 15 of Drag Race, everyone. If you loved her or any of the other performance showcased in tonight's episode, give them a follow, like all their content on Instagram and Facebook and Twitters. And go ahead and keep your eyes open for upcoming Ray Lopez Entertainment events and Demonica DeVille Moonlight Madness shows. Every third Wednesday of the month. Third Every third Wednesday. At Bonham yes. Third Wednesday. You can also catch the Bonham Bibs every Sunday night. Don't forget to check them out too at 11 o'clock. Aside from that, we thank you both for being with us and thank you for letting us use your fe- lovely home. Of course, my home, my studio. <laughs> um, thanks for having us. Had a great time. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode. I am your host, Timothy Baragan, and then this is Novella, Demonica, and my lovely co host, Fernando. Or you can call me Timon. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, <laughs> tell a friend, and we'll see y'all in the next episode. <laughs> Mwah. Bye. Bye.